guys are back again today. More Switch talk, of course. There's, there's, there's a lot of talk about with the Nintendo Switch, but today I'm going to talk about the uh, horrible decision that Nintendo is making with their voice chat app. This is uh, just a bad, bad move. It's going to bite them in the ass, and I'm going to tell you exactly why. That it's going to have a bad effect, a negative effect. It's going to impair them on a deep level, on a third party level. It's going to dissuade publishers and developers to bring their online games to the platform. Now, this kind of seems a little bit obvious when you think about it, but I'm going to, you know, articulate, highlight certain things, explain what Nintendo is trying to do with their online, paid online su subscription service. Now, let's get right into it. So, Reggie Fills Me has basically said that the smartphone app is basically needed for voice chatting on the Nintendo Switch. And it makes sense. It, it does on a hardware level. They're solving a problem and it, basically one of the only ways they know how is utilizing hardware that everyone already has to the smartphone. So it's an interesting decision, but it is a very counterintuitive decision. It is a very bad decision in such that the game console is made first and foremost. This is Nintendo's own words. The Switch is first and foremost a home based system. When the Switch is docked, now this is a conjecture on my part, this has not been officially confirmed, but I'm pretty sure that I'm correct on this. When the Switch is docked, the 3.5mm headphone jack will not be able to be used for audio or microphone. And you'll have to, the only way that you'll be able to use the, <laughs> the Switch, like headphone wise, Besides hooking your headphones directly up to the TV is if you take the switch out of the dock and hook your headphones directly up to the switch while it's in mobile mode or tabletop mode. That's fine. But Nintendo has basically made it clear that you cannot use your headphones, your your microphone in this situation. You cannot use your microphone when in tabletop, like directly hooking up the headset to the switch. You cannot use the microphone on that said headset to communicate with people. You have to plug in your headphones with the microphone into the the uh, your smartphone with the app installed. And the only way to get this app is if you pay for it, if you pay the subscription service fee. So it's just so awkward. It's it's interesting because it's a hands-free. They want everything to be hands-free and easy. And essentially, what Nintendo wants you to do is have a Bluetooth headset. Bluetooth headset with the Bluetooth mic and you don't really have to worry about all these cords or anything it's all hands free and they want you basically to sit your phone up you know have it sitting up and basically use your phone for voice over IP chatting hands free like like Skype or Ventrilo so it but it's very counterintuitive because if that is 100% required for for voice apps which are for voice chatting which is what uh, Reggie said now here, here's here's a quote right from Reggie during an interview with GameSpot. The smartphone app that we're creating, that will be a big part of our online service. We believe it is going to be a very compelling part of the overall proposition because that's how you'll voice chat, that's how you'll do matchmaking, and create your lobby. We also think it's a very elegant solution because if you've taken the switch on the go, you've put yourself in a hot spot. You're looking to get into a quick match Mario Kart in or to whip out some sort of bulky gamer headset is a bit of a challenge. So people buy bulky gamer headsets because they deliver superior audio fidelity, they, they deliver awesome microphone performance. They have them for a reason. And Nintendo they could i don't i you know i don't know i don't know if the the switch itself can even uh do voice chatting with a microphone it has no built-in mic but i mean a headset mic i don't even know if that's possible i would imagine it should be it should be possible with the headset jack but i'm not sure exactly what nintendo is doing so i think what they're what they want to do is make it exclusive for subscribers only and the only way to really do that is lock it behind that app so that app is a pay gate and that in itself is counterintuitive to their overall business design. Now the main reason that Nintendo is even making this online service is to facilitate not only to facilitate quality servers, quality performance of online game servers. They, they want, if you go in and play multiplayer online, they want it to be quality. They, they want to deliver something that lives up to your standards. 
so that requires paid it requires a, a paid server because the switch what they want the switch to be is a mainstream device it's not something that that is going to it's going to eclipse the Wii U they want it to be on a whole new level a whole new mainstream level and that means a lot of people are going to be playing online all the time so in order to facilitate strong servers servers that deliver constantly deliver they have to invest in infrastructure they have to invest in an online environment and that's what they're doing that's what they're going to use our money for now that they're going to use the it's going to be free up until fall so they'll have that time to facilitate their own network their own service they'll have time to invest it then recoup the cost from the the uh, subscription fees but the main reason why Nintendo is making this online subscription service is to attract third-party developers because they want to have a quality online infrastructure that allows developers to have basically they they want all of the developers and publishers to bring their biggest games their biggest online games to the switch Nintendo wants the switch that you know you saw the esports section and the original switch uh, concept reveal that was not a mistake that that is a clear indicator of what they want the switch to be where they want it to go and I think this is going to affect games like Splatoon very 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 negatively I don't think the games will ever hit their eSpot, sorry, eSpot, they'll ever hit their eSports stride because in order to communicate with your team, you have to have a smartphone and you have to have a headset hooked up to your smartphone. It's a very backward, awkward, just counterintuitive method to allow voice chatting. Esports hinges, eSports competitions hinge on communication with your team you have to be able to easily communicate with your team over voice chat over chatting you, you have to do that that's that part of esports when publishers see that not everyone first of all the online multiplayer would not be accessible to everyone that that right there kind of that's that's no different than xbox live and playstation you know that's that's part of the thing but they see that that's that's something that they're kind of like, ooh, it's it's not 100% accessible anymore as it used to be on Nintendo hardware. Okay, well, you know, it, it'll be better. We'll have better servers. So, okay, that's cool. But when they see the app, the requirement of the app, they are not going to be enthusiastic about that. When you create hurdles for your players, you create hurdles for developers. You significantly affect the user base in certain aspects. So most people I don't think will will utilize that they won't be interested in communicating with their team they'll, they'll it'll go unused and that will affect the actual overall scope of the online interactions it'll, it'll affect the scope of the online service as a whole and third-party developers and publishers will see well it's not very easy to chat with players you know even if EA was going to bring Battle Battlefield, let's say they're going to bring Battlefield to the Switch. It's like, okay, this is awesome. You know, we're testing the waters with FIFA. Let, let's go ahead, let's just try it. Let's bring Battlefield to the Switch. And they see that players can't easily chat with each other. They can't easily communicate with each other in multiplayer. That's going to be a huge that's not going to persuade them to want to even bother. And uh, here's here's a quote from Reggie, and I'm not making all this up. This is one of the huge reasons why they made the online subscription service. Now, here's a quote from Reggie proving it. So, in this quote, Reggie is talking about all the ways that Nintendo has to change, has to initiate its platform, has to make an, uh, an, an environment to attract these developers. And not only attract them, but to keep them whenever they do attract them very important so they look for there's quoting Reggie third-party developers and publishers look for a full range of ways to monetize their investment and that's where having a robust online environment comes in and again we're pushing the envelope we're doing things differently and we're working hard to make sure that environment exists now 
he goes on to talk about exactly what he means by that. Basically what Nintendo, they want the online environment, they want the online environment to exist in such a way that developers and publishers can say, hey, here's DLC, here's microtransactions, here's all the things that developers want. Now if you look at EA's uh, IR reports, they talk about how they love engagement and they love how their digital DLC and digital uh, content is selling. They, that's one of their biggest things. If you want to get the attention of EA, you want EA to bring their biggest games over, you have to facilitate a platform for them to bring all of their DLC. All of the stuff that people have kind of problems with, like season passes, all that stuff needs to be, you need to have the online environment there ready for all that stuff, ready for to attract them. And the online app, the chatting app, that may or may not be 100% required for lobbies, or as matchmaking, sorry. Now, I would imagine matchmaking would be, would be on the game side, not through the app, which is kind of confusing if you ask me. Maybe like custom games or something through the app, I don't know. But if you lock matchmaking through the app, that's, that's a whole new set of problems. I'm just talking about the voice chat. You're limiting the ways that people can communicate with each other. And think of it again, not everyone has a smartphone. Most people do, not everyone does. That's something else to consider that Nintendo needs to consider. And Reggie says that third party publishers, they look for a large install base. That's what we're trying to create. And as an executive for the company, I believe we're doing everything we need to do to create that environment for third parties. So far, they're reacting extremely positively. Yes, they are. They, they are excited about the Switch. But if they don't handle the voice chat thing, if they don't handle the online service properly, they are never going to get big online games on the Switch. They'll, they'll be stuck with Spl Splatoon, which might be enough. They'll be stuck with, their, with certain third-party online games. But it will never be as big as Nintendo wants it to be and I think it, it won't facilitate esports properly whatsoever because of the simple fact that the gamers will have a problem they will have a roadblock in communicating with each other you know esports players will have to bring their smartphone hook up their their uh, headsets to the smartphone if there's ever any type of problem with the smartphones like if it if it loses power if it there's any time like connection issues they'll be locked out of communicating with their team and that is a vital aspect for esports so I don't think it's going to be anywhere nearly as big as Nintendo hopes it will unless they solve this unless they make it better they, they can't do something like this even if you have to make a separate add-on make an accessory that, that's required an optional accessory that's required for voice chatting you know, they could easily have like a, a little strap or something with a, a Wi-Fi uh, radio inside of it and hook up a headset to that and that's how you communicate with your team. Something like that. But they wanted to go the easy route and utilize something that everyone has. With that's, that right there is a band-aid. That is not a solution. That's just a band-aid. If they ever want Splatoon or any, any other uh, Nintendo Switch game to be big in esports, or to attract big name online games, they have to fix this. It's not acceptable, it will not fly. The publishers will not take Nintendo seriously. They will say, look man, you have to give gamers a way to, to do the basic thing that's required to facilitate online play is chatting with each other. T any kind of professional team-based gaming needs a chat function, a dependable built-in chat function that supports headsets, that supports high quality headsets. I, we, we can't, you can't mess around with this kind of stuff. It's very important. So I, I, that's gonna be a roadblock. And I think that uh, this is a band-aid. I think Nintendo knows, like they've seen, they're listening. But the thing is, they're not just listening to us. They're listening to developers. Now, if developers and publishers say, look, this isn't gonna fly, they've already heard us as gamers say, this is ridiculous, this is a terrible option. What is what are you doing? And if the developers start making a rumble, they will change it. Because they can only listen to us to a certain point. 
They have to listen. Developers are more important than gamers to a point. They have to listen to the developers to facilitate that environment to bring the third party games over. Because this system will fail just like the Wii U without third party games. But Nintendo is trying to do something huge with their online structure. They're, they're trying to do something on an Xbox Live level, on the eSports level. And it will not. It will not take off without a basic online feature. Like it, it's basic online chatting feature. So that's pretty much something that um, I think I've covered all the points that I want to make. Um, let, me, let me know what you guys think. You, you know, you might like the chat app. I don't think anyone likes it, but you might like it. You might like the idea. I think it's interesting, but it's not something that's uh, a real definitive solution for certain things. And I think Nintendo's, they got to they gotta fix it. All right, guys, we'll take it easy, and we'll see you next time.